Okay, so today, another solos match in Warzone. I'm going to use the SA-87 and MP7 in this video. I've gone back to the SA-87 after a pretty long time away from it. It's actually one of my favourite light machine guns in Warzone. And uh, we're picking up the game here after I died very early on after grabbing the scav and I got punched in the face by some guy who was also going for the scav. And uh, I've come back from the gulag and, and got my first kill. So we're just getting into the round here. At the moment, we, uh, we're not close to the loadout just yet. And by the way, in case you didn't know, this is one of those commentaries where I've already played the match and then I'm kind of just talking over the gameplay and sort of explaining my methodology behind some of my movements and also explaining some of my mistakes because... You know, I'm only human. I do make mistakes. And I don't play a lot of solos, so I'm probably going to make a lot more mistakes than most people who do play solos. But, um, yeah, I like doing these videos because it allows me to analyse my gameplay. And, you know, the last couple that I've done, you guys seem to really enjoy them. But uh, one thing I do want to mention, I've just launched a second channel, by the way. It's called Westy Clips. And basically what I'm doing is just taking short little clips from my videos or even from gameplay that you guys don't get to see here on the main channel. And I'm just going to be posting them as like little videos on a on a second channel. Uh, I've got a few videos up there already and about 2,500 of you have already gone over and subscribed, which is fantastic. Thank you so much for that. But if you aren't subscribed, then there's a link at the top of the description. Go and click on that. It'll take you to the second channel. Hit subscribe, turn on notifications. That'll be awesome. Poor guy. He had a self-res at this point in the game, which I was a little bit surprised at, but I popped a deadie just as I was crossing the road. So even if he had seen me, he wouldn't have heard my footsteps at that point. And uh, I think there I'm struggling to pick up the stopping power because my dead silence has reset because I killed somebody. So I can't pick anything up in that slot yet. But uh, by the way, FFAR, ground loot. If, uh, if you find one of those guns, you are onto a winner early game. Yes, you only get 25 bullets per mag, but if you can land most of those shots, then... You're on to a winner early game. You're going to get plenty of kills with that gun. So at this point now, I do actually get my loadout. It's not a bad position to get it. It's sort of two and a half minutes left on the on the first circle. But uh, yes, yeah, so I'm running the SA-87 and the MP7 as a secondary because the SA-87, it can reach really, really far, that gun, as a primary. So I think, I think I'm running. Don't quote me on this. I'll show you at the end of the video the full loadout. But I think it's Monolithic Suppressor. Longest Barrel, Tac Laser, VLK, and 60 Round Mags. I think that's the setup that I've gone for here, but I'll put the I'll put the loadout at the end of the video for you. But I've really, really liked this gun ever since I first started using it in maybe Season 4 of Warzone. I think it's an absolutely brilliant gun for mid to long range, and I recommend 100% that you give it a go. Okay, so moving further forward a little bit here, I'd spotted a vehicle on the minimap that had looped right round to like sort of the northwest round by Quarry. And you can just see it on the minimap up there in the in the top right corner. And he's gotten out on the buy here. So I thought, you know what, I'll be a little bit of a bushwookie. Don't want to expose myself too much. And I saw him hop into the compound and then he hopped back out again. Get a little bit closer. Didn't manage to take him out, which was a little bit concerning. And then a third party comes to join the party. <laughs> This guy gets a little bit spooked, but we're in good cover here. Saw him just peek over the wall, get a quick reload in. You're dead. I don't think he was very happy, the fact that I got him. And I think he must have been a bit spooked by that third guy in the other building. Yeah, I definitely had the better positioning. Even though I was downhill there because I was crouched around the side of that building, I don't think he could see me very well, whereas he was like right on the horizon line on the top of the hill. I could clearly see him against the sky. Nice and easy job done. And of course now we get our second loadout, which I can run over and get ghosts from. I always try and do this. I know I see a lot of people taking ghosts as their first loadout, but uh, I take it as my second. And just here, I think I managed to spot somebody up by the logs. Yep, that's where I spotted him. He was just standing as a little silhouette on the edge of the rock there. And unfortunately, <laughs> SA-87 just monstered him from that range. I don't know if he had full plates. It felt like I killed him very, very quickly. So he might not have had plates, but yeah, MP7 coming in to, to finish off there. And the reason I'm using the MP7 with the SA-87 is, of course, you need something at close range because the SA-87 is no good at that, really. But the MP7 obviously does, and it's got really good movement speed as well. 
uh, which is why I like using it so much. And you might remember I did a video maybe a week ago about the MP7. Uh, I really enjoy using that gun. So if I'm going to take a, a secondary, like as a submachine gun, it's pretty much always going to be the MP7. I know the Mac 10 is just ridiculously good at the moment, but, you know, I like the MP7, so I'll keep hold of it. Now, at this point here, I've obviously taken the bounty, spotted somebody further up the map. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't coming in too close to this sort of, like, medical compound, because people can just push up on these rocks and get you instantly. Now, because the bounty's down the other end, I'm pretty sure that, that I'm clear here. And I popped the second UAV that I bought from the buy station. It's always good if you've got the spare cash to, um, to have a UAV in your pocket in solos, because... Even at this point, lots of people might still not have still not have Ghost, so you can just pop it whenever you like. There's one guy at the top corner of the minimap. I managed to finish that guy off, who looked to have actually killed somebody in the middle of the road and who was looting at the time. But there's still a guy on the minimap here, and if you look at that minimap, you can see he's in the tower. Which, yeah, you can see him just pop into the tower there. And people who hold these towers are really infuriating, because... It's almost impossible to kill them. It's it's really hard to get them. Tried to flank round the tower guy here. And I think I can still see him in there at the moment. I can't see him, but I hit the mark button and he's there. So, because like looking through a window, sometimes it can be a little bit funny. But you can't quite see properly. But he could definitely see me. Landed a couple of shots. So now he knows that I'm actually here. But you got to remember, I cut forward about a minute and a half here. <laughs> he's still in the tower and he hasn't moved. So this guy is your, your classic solo camper, especially in this part point of the game. I know there's like only about 28, 30 players left, but we're only on circle two here. Like, <laughs> and he's already camping the tower. He goes for the RPG, but he's not going to get me with that. Cutting even further forward here. I can still see him on, on the minimap, but I don't think I can really challenge him. I do have a thermite, but unfortunately that doesn't get him. And I, I can't, I just can't challenge it. I simply can't challenge that. I simply can't. <laughs> so I just uh, take the quick route out. I know it would have been great to get the kill on that guy and clear him out and know that there was one less person on the map. But honestly, I just left him to it. I'm sure he'll get killed by somebody else anyway. Now we pick back up here as uh, I'm on the left side of the frozen river. On the right hand side, you can't quite see it yet. But up the top here to the north... There's a couple of people fighting over by sort of the bunker location. And I spotted them on the minimap about 30 seconds earlier. He's down. That that armor break came in really quick from the SA-87. But uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the down came a lot later. Because, of course, he started moving and reacting to the shots that I was landing. And I think the other guy gave me the kill confirm. So at this point, I'm kind of just fighting against the other guy that was over here. And of course, if you play a lot of solos, you guys are going to know that if you're not rolling around in the Big Bertha truck, then you're not playing it properly. And of course, as you can see here, I haven't got a Big Bertha truck. One is out of the zone, but there's no point in me running all the way down there to get that truck because that player is still down there and he could very easily loop back around, catch me out in the open. Unfortunately, I could have actually gone and got that truck because, of course, he's fully fled onto the other side of the river. But the zone's coming in now and there's no real point in me you know, going to actually take that. Because I'm now on the mountain. I'm in a fairly good position here. 16, 18 players left, I think it says in the top corner. We've really not got that many players left here. Just looting around the fire station area. Notice again on the minimap, Truck Lad is back for more. Uh, and there's another vehicle on the minimap. I didn't actually remember that from the gameplay. But obviously being in fire station, low down, these two vehicles around, you need the height. So immediately go straight for the tower. <laughs> I have become the camping solo now, but seems the guy came in on the uh, the little tack rover and then he wanted the truck. He kind of hangs around for a little bit here. It's definitely on the uh, on the heartbeat, but being in the tower is a really advantageous position. Yes, I'm camping this, but these two guys that were driving around, they both had trucks. I could have jumped out the window here and nicked his truck, but uh, it would also let him know that someone was here. And I'm pretty confident he didn't know I was here. And obviously he didn't have ghosts because he's showing up on, on my heartbeat sensor. And again, I could have shot the guy there. But th there's literally no point. Because at the end of the day, he could then hold me out of the circle. 
with his truck, because all he'd have to do is wait for the gas to come in, get in his truck and drive off. I'd have to run out in the open here like I am now. So if I'd have shot him, that would have been a, a terrible move. It would have just given away my position. There was no point in doing that. Now, at this point here, we are in sort of classic Warzone solo territory. There's only about 11 players left, and the circle's still absolutely massive. So I'm just sort of taking the hillside on the backside of the, of the circle here. And as you can see, someone rolling around in another truck. It might be the same guy, it might be different. That black skin's pretty common. But um, definitely Solo's players, they, they love that truck because it just gives them so much protection, especially when they're out in the open. But because I didn't take the truck all the way back at the bunker, I don't have that luxury. So I've got to work my way through here and get to a final circle location that has plenty of angles in it, as you can see from the map there. So you join me now in the uh, fairly final circles. And as you can see, one guy's just got out of his truck and there's two other trucks over on the other side of the circle. Honestly, this is just classic Warzone solos. And I've decided once again to just become a bush wookie here because there's not really much I can do in this situation. I don't have any explosives. I don't have, like, I've got no thermites. I've got a plate box, which means I could pop that down at any moment. I could get my plates back if I get hit, but... At the same time, these guys are rolling around in trucks that will just one-hit you. And if he decided to run me over or wanted to hop out and shoot me as I'm trying to run out in the open, i got three guys rolling around in trucks here. I stand absolutely no chance, but this guy that's in the back building, I think he's in that window. And a couple of times I do spot him, but I realise both of my guns have lasers on them, which means as soon as I look through that window, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give my position away. But... Uh, yeah, I have become the camping solo once again, because what choice do I have with three people driving around in trucks in the final circle? He did actually see me there because he's landed the shot. I'm going to be sneaky sneaky for this next bit. Once again, channeling my inner Wookiee. How did that guy not see me? I mean, you maybe you can answer that question. I don't know how he didn't see me. It was pretty obvious standing behind the bush because I wasn't crouched at that point. I actually stood up in my little my bear outfit. <laughs> I'm playing as the uh, the skin that's got like the bear like fur over his shoulders. Very weird. But um, yeah, I'm not sure how he didn't see me. This guy here being super smart jumps out of his four x four Land Rover, jumps into the spare truck. So the meta is still continuing here. It's just truck wars online. But there is a guy below me in the ammo store. I can, you can, might be able to hear his footsteps. I managed to break that guy, which proves you can shoot through the truck windows, but once he gets from behind, it's much more difficult to do that. Just notice the frame rate of this recording is a little bit low. Sorry about that. You can hear the footsteps here. I think he opened that door. Now, you can see where the circle is. You can see the final building that's in the circle there. And this guy below me, he definitely knows I'm here. I'm not, I'm not making it... Not being quiet or anything like that, but I only really have one option. And that was it. <laughs> MP7 comes in clutch. But yeah, that was my only option because I needed to take this bit of cover here on the far side of the circle. It's probably the best bit of cover in the entire circle other than the concrete wall over there by Lumber. And if you're on that, like that's a long wall, so there could be multiple people around that area. Look at this guy. With his riot shield. The poor lad. The poor lad. He just wanted to get his solos win. And I was there to ruin his day. So it's 2v2. Coming down to the final circle. Missed every single shot. That was my moment. To absolutely leather that guy. And I completely fluffed it. Absolutely completely fluffed it. Now at this point I was sure he was going to push across the road. Because look at the final circle, like most of it is across the road here. So I thought, you know what? Again, bush wookie for like the 17th time. I'll just, I'll just go for the bushes. Why not? He'll push across. Apparently not. And don't forget, we know that this guy doesn't have ghosts because I had two blips on my heartbeat sensor when I killed the riot shield guy. So the other guy must have been close to him. And now, he's just, he's disappeared like a wizard. You might have just spotted him. There you go. He's over there. And unfortunately, this is where Westy loses the match. I'll let it play for you. Oh. 
Unfortunately, I went and took the outside line there between the two buildings, between the yellow building and the white building. I absolutely should have hugged the white building and just used my gas mask for a little bit. And I didn't think about it. Really unfortunate. So to just quickly cover off the loadout, I was right. Monolithic suppressor, longest barrel, tack laser, VLK optic, 60 round mags. This is a great weapon for solos because it gives you massive range. You don't have to take a sniper rifle if you don't want to. And then backed up with the MP7, monolithic suppressor, 5 milliwatt laser, no stock, 60 round mags, and the Merc 4 grip. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget, subscribe to the second channel. Link is at the top of the description. It'd be great if we could maybe get 10,000 subs in the first few weeks. That would be awesome. But again, thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.